Hi guys, the Benny Dorm Enthusiast here and today we're covering quite a complex subject. It's beyond my area of expertise so we found someone in the know who's going to explain things in the simplest way they can. How do you move to Spain from the UK? What are the options available? Let's go have a chat with Kelly from Kelly's Expat and Tourism Services and she's going to go through things with us. Hi Kelly. Hi. Nice to see you. Nice to see you again. So today we're going to try and answer a lot of questions which we get asked um, over and over again on our videos, in messages and all sorts um, about moving to Spain from the UK. Mm -hmm. So let's start with the basic, well simplest question. Is it possible since Brexit for UK passport holders to move here? Yeah, absolutely. Um, they can they can definitely still move here since Brexit. It's just a lot more difficult than it used to be. Mm -hmm. And so there's three main vi visas. Is that right? Yeah. So we've got the um, the most popular is the non-lucrative visa, which is the non-working visa. Um, we've got so the non-working visa. The requirements. Do you need to go into the? Yeah, let's yeah. go over them. One, let's go one by one. Um, each visa. The NLV they call this, don't they? Yeah, non-working visa, non-lucrative visa. That stands for. Um, so basically, the requirements for this is it, it's more suitable for older people or pensioners. But then again, young people can still come over on this visa. Okay. Um, the requirements are per applicant. You would need to show twenty-eight thousand eight hundred euros. Um, in savings or in a form of income that's not work. Okay. So it can be like a rental property in the UK, um, it can be a private pension or a state pension, and that goes off the total. So just for example, if, just to call it a round figure, you had €10,000 a month coming in from a rental property in the UK, you would only need to show 18800 Okay. Um, this is just for one applicant. A family member, which is a spouse or a long-term partner, or a child um, has to show another 7,500 each per okay. applicant for the year. Okay, and what entitlements have they got then when, when they get that visa? Basically, the only entitlement is to be able to live in Spain. They mm -hmm. can't work okay. with this visa. So yeah, it just gives them a, perm a permission to live here. That's a basic residence permit. Mm -hmm. permit. Okay, um, and is that the only requirements that's needed then, just a proof of income? No, so they also need private medical insurance, um, which that varies in price obviously depending um, you know, on the conditions and their age. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So are they the only requirements, the income, or is there anything else? Um, no, so they would also need private medical insurance, um, which varies obviously on the age of the person and the conditions of the health. Um, that has to be paid for 12 months up front, they can't pay monthly, and it has to be the top standard insurance to cover, um, like you would get on the state healthcare. Okay. So there can't be any excess to pay, any limit on hospitalisations, it's got to be the top coverage. Um, you're looking at for somebody the age of say let's say 60 years old you're looking at maybe 950 euros a year more or less okay um obviously the older you get it's more expensive the younger it's, it's cheaper um other than that if they're a pensioner uh, which is um, the same it's a non-lucrative visa but for state pensioners they're both entitled to free health care so if they come in as a couple and one of them is a retired person and the spouse isn't they're both entitled to free health care oh well, that's good mm -hmm. with an s1 okay and how much does it actually cost to to apply for this visa so our fee we charge um 600 euros per person up front and 600 euros on completion which includes every single fee other than the embassy fee in the uk which is 516 pounds per person which they pay on the day and the health insurance if it's needed. If it's not needed, the S1, obviously, we, we, we do everything from the office. They mm -hmm. also need criminal record checks, um, which have to be legalised and translated. We have to have the marriage certificate legalised and translated and updated um, to say that they're still married. So there is, there is quite a lot of fees involved. It, the, the 600 includes all the fees. It's a lot of paperwork that you've got to process it and, and, and deal with, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's a lot of paperwork, yeah. Okay, so let's move on to the second most common visa, which is the golden visa, is that right? Yeah, so the golden visa is just for 
few, <laughs> not, not many meet the requirements. Um, basically the golden visa, you have to buy a property debt free up to 500,000 euros, sorry, a minimum of 500,000 euros. Ooh, yeah. lottery winners, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> basically. Um, the one thing to note on the golden visa is that the, um, the, the property has to be only in one name. If it's in joint names, it has to be over a million. Wow. So even if it's in one name, you can still bring your partner or your spouse or your children, but it has to be owned in one name first, and then the, they can come out as family members. Wow. Yeah. And can you work with that visa? Yeah, with the golden visa, you can work with, the, with that. And also there's no restrictions to where you want to go in Europe. You can go and live in Europe anywhere else. Right. And also you can be here for one day of the year. There's no time limit as how long you have to stay, spend in Spain. Oh, right, okay. But that is, um, well, it's out of reach for, for most people, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And there's another one which isn't so common, but it is a possibility, and that's the digital nomad visa. Yeah, so the digital nomad visa um, is, again, it's quite uh, difficult. Not many people meet the requirements. Mm -hmm. um, because they have to uh, have a degree or have three years experience in that profession, which is obviously they have to be able to work from home because it's a digital digital visa. So they have to be, it's like people working on the laptop from, from the house. Right. But they have to have been employed for a minimum, um, well, three years in experience in that trade, but as long as they've worked for that company, a minimum of three months. But the company has to have been running for 12 months, does that make sense? Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it, would be, it wouldn't be a Spanish company? No, it's got to be a company that's um, outside of Spain. Right. They can have, I think, a certain percent, a very small percentage. I'd, I'm not sure without checking, but it's a low percentage of the business can come from Spain, but the majority has got to come from out of Spain. Okay. Um, so what are, is, is there any sort of visa that allows your average Joe to come and work here on a UK passport? No. 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 It doesn't happen anymore. No. So you can't just come over and get a job like you used to, unless you've got an Irish passport, EU, but not on a UK passport. No, you can't come anymore. The only thing you can do is come in on one of these visas and wait five years for permanent residency and then you can work. Wow. Okay, so you just um, mentioned there about an Irish, if you've got an Irish passport, obviously that's an EU and uh, that makes things well, it's, it's like it used to be for UK people. So if Irish people or people with an Irish passport wanted to come and move here, what do they have to do? Um, so people with an Irish passport, it's fairly straightforward. It's the same as what it used to be for the British, mm -hmm. which um, they can either get a, a job straight away, a work contract, which they would need an NIE number. That, again, that's simple, easy to get. And then they can get um, a work contract. If they work in, they only need to have three months worth of um, salary, three months wage, th well, three months contract of a minimum of 20 hours per week, mm -hmm. 20 hours a week. Um, they don't need the health insurance if they're working because they're paying, the, the boss will be paying the social security or they can go self-employed and obviously it pays the social security. If they're not working, they have to have the private medical insurance or the rest one if they're pensioners. Um, and they have to have a minimum of €7,000 in a Spanish bank account. Now, that does have to be in a Spanish bank account, whereas, as opposed to the non-lucrative visa, the funds can be in a UK account okay, or a golden visa. But with this one, um, it has to be in a Spanish bank account and they have to show movement on the account for three months. Okay. It's complicated, isn't it? Um, this one's easier. This one, but in, in general... Um it's, it's quite yeah, a complicated process I mean, nowadays. It's not, I mean, when I moved here, you just sort of went to the police station, give your papers in, and they gave you yeah, it. Yeah. It was, um, for the NIE, I mean, for the Irish, it is the same as that, really. They can come, at, come get an NIE number, go and get a bar job, um, and then, um, you know, and then they're entitled to the residencia. Mm -hmm. And it's also a good way if they've got a UK passport holder as a spouse, because then, once they've got their green card, the residencia, the spouse is then entitled um, to residency and work. Okay. A working residency. Mm. Right then, is there anything else, um, any other important info you think our viewers need to know? Yeah, so one thing to know is that on the EU residency, um, 
they don't have to do a criminal record check. So if you have got people that's had a past and have got a criminal record, they can still get this visa and the spouses, it's not a requirement to ask okay. for that. But on the non-lucrative visa, they have to have a squeaky clean criminal record. Well, thank you for your time today, Kelly. Um, and if anybody wants to discuss any of these options further, get in touch with Kelly. We'll post all the details in the video description. So there you have it guys, it is still possible to move to Spain from the UK but it's not as simple as it once was. I hope this video has answered a lot of your questions for you. If you do have more or if you'd like to start the process, get in touch with Kelly at Kelly's Expat and Tourism Services. We'll post all the relevant links in the video description. Thanks for watching, make sure you subscribe to the channel, click that beer mug in the corner and also check us out on Facebook, Instagram X and TikTok at The Benidorm Enthusiast. Stay positive and stay safe.